Welcome to my channel and playlist Sewing Made Easy. I'd like to give you a little hint today, something else about sewing machines. As some of you who might have been watching some of my videos know, I prefer officially to work with industrial sewing machines. The reason is I grew up with them and that's all I used to use for any kind of sewing for my work that I used to do for many, many decades. But now I decided I bought myself a household sewing machine because I wanted to have loads of different varieties of nice decor stitchings and of buttonholes. That was the main reason. But this is not about this at the moment. What I like to tell you is, if you got a household machine, maybe you noticed, especially when you have it in the beginning, you got this machine, okay, at home. Where do I put it? Which table do I use? Which is the right height? Where can I get my legs properly underneath? And you find, or many of you will know, you've done a little stitching, you've done something little, and you think, oh, okay, i got to move the machine away because I don't know when I'm using it next. So all you have to do is pack up the whole machine again and put it somewhere where you don't fall over it. Well, okay, it gets on your nerves after a while. It would go on mine anyway. So I decided I want my household sewing machine to be in a position, in a table, on a table, in a table, the same as my normal industrial sewing machines. And that is so easy to do yourself. Of course you can look around and find a table and find one to buy which are made for households machines. But I found after I've looked around, they cost quite some money. Well, first of all, the cheap ones that you might get for around 150 euro, there's nothing to them. They're very weakly, they're very badly made. You hardly get your knees in between and you really don't know where you are with it. So that's out for my opinion. The good ones, or I, no, I don't know if they're good because I haven't tried them, I haven't tested them. But there are some, they go into the money. I've seen some prices between 400 and 800 euro for a table and even there, the machine wouldn't really sit inside. It's still stuck on the top, which is not the idea either. Because I don't want to work up here in the air. I want everything, like my industrial machine, to be evenly, to work for me easy. And this is what I'm going to tell you all about in this video. All you need is some working tabletop to buy. In my case, I was lucky. I done the kitchen some years ago and I kept my kitchen working top for parties and so on because we said uh, it was too, it's, it's been used but it's too good to throw away, you can't sell it anymore so keep it for any kind of party as so we always got some big tables. Anyway, I had this one left. It is a little bit deeper than the usual industrial sewing machine tables because there are 50 centimeters. Why this kitchen tabletop is 60 centimeters deep. But that's all right. It gives me more space if you have a big coat to sew. It doesn't fall around all the time and uh, slipping off the table off. And the normal industrial sewing machine table is one meter five long. And I made this 10 centimeters longer. So in case, if I, as an example, would have a little overlock at any time, then I could also place that here on the other side so I got the table there as well for using. So that was my idea on all this. So what you need as I said is you need a tabletop to buy in the size you want. I say it's got to be at least 50 by 1 meter. If it's a little bit bigger that's alright as well. What you need an extra piece for underneath where the machine is actually sitting on which you will see in a moment while we're doing this. You need four a table feet to buy in any builder's market. You get all this in the builder's market anyway. And you need some uh, winkle connectors which I show you later on as well. Well, as you can see, it's all done already and I'm very satisfied with how we did it and that's why I show this to you now. Maybe it gives you an idea that you say, okay, I'm going to do that as well because I probably will do some more sewing because sometimes I'm too lazy to get the machine out from behind. 
and I think you will enjoy your work also much more. Here we go. To do the correct cutout for our sewing table, we first of all do a pattern, so use any kind of cardboard that you got, put the machine on top and draw it all the way once around and then cut the pattern out. Now you take the tabletop which you chosen to do this sewing table for and draw the pattern you just made onto the position where you would like to cut the hole to let the machine in. After we've done the cutout for the machine, we're putting on the very rough wooden edges some self-sticking felt to make sure when the machine is lifted in while sewing we will not scratch the surface, the outside surface of the sewing machine. To hold the machine in position we've just cut a piece of plywood 60 by 30 centimeters which will be connected with some Winkle connectors. You see six here at the moment, but we actually got eight to be able to hang up this piece of wood to hold up the machine, which you will see in a moment. The Winkle connectors have been attached to our plywood piece and now it's ready to be screwed onto the actual working table. And now all we did is screw the prepared piece of wood underneath the working table. Now all you have to do is lift your sewing machine into the prepared opening of the table, the table hole, and do all the connections and try if it all works. So here you can see the complete finished sewing table with my machine led into the unit there, into the table. You can see my foot pedal on the floor, you can see my knee lever. And if I'm closing up to it, you can see how nicely it's been set in, perfectly the way to be used daily. Not a machine that's being moved away and moved around. No, this has its steady position now and it will stay there and I don't need to search for my sewing machine. One more thing I got to mention though, as you know on, on most of household machines, you can pull the left side off to have a free working arm like for tight sleeves or tight trousers. Well, of course, if you need that option, then all you have to do for this particular seam, maybe lift the machine out and use it for that moment, but as you will know, most of the time, I would say at least 90 if not 99 percent, you're not using that anyway, because I never used it in my life, I don't need one, no matter what I'm sewing, I don't need this free arm option on the sewing machine, but if you do, then lift it out for that one seam and lift it back in again, and you still get your proper table at any time. Well, this is it for today from my side. I hope I gave you a nice idea how you can really work with a machine properly and not moving it from one corner to the other looking for a table where it would fit on because that is no fun. I'm saying goodbye for now. Until next time. Tschüss.